Good morning. Turn the mic a little bit more to me. There we go. Hello. Happy Sunday. It's been a week. <laughs> uh, maybe needs to down a little bit more. There we go. Hopefully that's good. Switch over to the usual things for the project. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Good. The little highlight works as well. All right. I set that up yesterday. I was thinking uh, I should have something like that. If I'm going to have the little VTuber style <laughs> thing down here. Anyway. Um, take a sip of coffee. So, what are we doing today? Well, continuing to work on Glowing Telegram as I have for the last uh, eight months, apparently. Yep. Uh, today, there, there's one small thing I think we can work on. I noticed as I was clicking around in the UI, trying to see where things were at, I was trying to uh, sort by stream date on the episode view. And this is not working. So I'm going to fix this <laughs> first thing. Uh, and then uh, what else we got? Uh, let's see. Go look at the project. It's kind of just scrolling through things. I think we're going to come back to this pull request that I had uh, opened, uh, I guess, maybe a month or two ago now. Uh, I recall when I kind of shelved that at the time that I didn't have a good use case for this anymore uh, for our task worker system to be able to essentially chain tasks, what I call follow on tasks here. Um, but we have at least two. One is to update a record once the video is uploaded. Um, and the other being to move the part where we are adding an uploaded YouTube video to a playlist, moving that into a separate task so that it can be separately retried if something were to go wrong. So, uh, so that that's probably gonna be most of the stream today. We'll see how far we get working on that. Uh, but first up, we're gonna work on some troubleshooting uh, with our, I'm fairly certain this is not a UI issue, right? So the table and the sorting and all this behavior comes from React Admin, which is this uh, library slash framework that uh, I'm using for the, the, the CRUD, uh, the create, retrieve, update, and delete uh, UI here. So like if I were to sort, You'll see in the URL, um, the value changes. The field is called um, stream date here. And it changes between ascending and descending order right there. Let's see ascending and the descending. And if I do a different order, like is published, see this works. So presumably something in the back end is, uh, is not respecting that stream date sort. Um, on the episode. And that makes sense. Um, why does that make sense? Well, uh, the way the database is set up, these episodes this field stream date is not coming. It's not part of the episode, right? The the episode is linked to a specific stream, and the stream has a stream date. Uh, so when we're displaying it here in the UI, we're actually looking up this date from the associated record across a uh, a foreign key relationship to that other table. So like if we look in the code here. 
which is now, as of the last stream, all consolidated down into a single uh, crate, the API crate. We have, let's see. I, I'm kind of tempted at this point. Oh, did I, did I? Um, so last stream, someone, it might've been just this, but someone, um, pointed out a thing we could do. Did I leave that as a tab or did I open that as a, uh, a item on the backlog? So one thing that was mentioned last stream was Figment. So I have a, a, a to-do item to check that out. I was looking briefly at the docs this morning, um, but we'll, we'll need some more time to kind of investigate that. Um, But it was essentially, uh, uh, the, the thing that was mentioned was um, being able to move some of the details about the route into the individual handlers. Uh, and given last week's conversation, that's probably, I'm not sure if there's not, I'm not sure that there isn't a reason to do that. Alternatively, I was thinking maybe extracting out all of the route definitions to a separate file. So essentially take this function and extract it out and then put it in a separate file. Might be kind of nice. Uh, but anyway, that's me thinking about uh, unrelated things that we don't need to do right now. What was they doing? a little bit more. There we go. Tasks, transcription, silence detection, twitching YouTube login. Um, records. All oh, right, this is the collapse part, right? So we're dealing with episode records. Specifically, this get list inside of episode here. So if I go to its handler, Take a look at what is happening here. So we're extracting out parameters. I'm getting the range and sort and filter. So what are we what are we doing with sort? We're passing it to create order expression, which is a, a macro that I made. Ah, yeah, so. I realized, I, I, I re-recalled, I guess it's redundant, I recalled. <laughs> uh, there was a, a warning that we were dealing with. We were trying to clean, clean up all the warnings last uh, Sunday. And there was something about the macro. And it turned out that the, uh, the warning, where it was like, you don't need to include this because it's already included, which was, you know, roughly, it wasn't really clear where the, what line the error was coming from. So I tried various things and I realized that this is a macro. It's not a function. Um, and that that's kind of stating, you know, the obvious thing, if you're familiar with Rust, um, or if you know what a macro is in the context of programming languages that support macros, but it's worth remembering, right? That um, at compile time, this, the syntax in here gets um, taken, processed, modified, you know, certain expressions are expanded, things happen. And then that code is effectively injected where the macro is used. Um, and the implication of that is that if you do something like list ID, 
in the list of things here that get come into this uh, expansion of field and ident, then ID gets placed inside of here as uh, as a one of the arms of this match. But ID is already here. So that was the, what the warning was, was that there was some unreachable stuff because we had redundant, this is me being clever, right? Uh, and a danger of macros is being, being too clever. Um, but I decided that, hey, all of my records that are gonna be have sortable things, we're always gonna have ID created and updated at. So let me just include that. Um, what I don't know is that is there a way to guard against passing in ID or created that or updated that here uh, on the macro that would have then you know helped surface that issue rather than let it kind of result in redundant things. It was harmless. It was just a warning. It just isn't reached because we already are doing that. But it, it's, it's, it was a somewhat confusing warning until it finally clicked that, oh yeah, let me go back and actually look at the code where we're using the macro. Oh yeah, there's an ID there. That's significant. Okay, so. This uh, macro is what's responsible for generating this order, which we use to pass the order by uh, in our query. So you can see here, this is where we're getting the stream date from streams, where the ID of the stream is equal to the stream ID of the episode. So how can we filter, can we sort by stream date here is a question. Um, let's do this. Let's just go into uh, PG Admin. Maybe at some point I'll uh, try out some different uh, SQL uh, GUI clients. I know of some others, even free and open source ones. Um, there we go. But PG Admin is uh, what I currently have installed, so we'll, we'll just go with that. Could at least upgrade it, but whatever. Uh, so this is kind of what the query is right now. Um, so we're just, um, from episodes. Order. Getting getting reused to this keyboard after uh, being away for most of the week and not having my fancy. Uh, Cole Mac layout keyboard. Um, so we're gonna, let's say like ID ascending or something. Um, limit ten. All right. So here is the the kind of query we're doing here. So how would I order? How would I sort by the stream date? I don't think, even if I were to give this an alias, that I would be able to refer to that. Oh, maybe I will be able to. Let's do ID and title. We don't need all the columns here. Did that work? It looks like it. I mean, it definitely did. Like, if it wasn't going to work, we would be getting error about referring to stream date. Okay. Interesting, interesting. I, I'm probably thinking of like, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
101. Can we do that? Like that. Aha, okay. So this is what I'm thinking of. You can't refer to this alias name in a where clause, but apparently you can in an order by. Well, that makes things easier. Um, to make this work, though, I do need to add an alias there. Uh, the as is the thing you can say. You can say as stream date, or you can leave it off. I guess if I'm going to do this, I might as well do this one too while I'm at it. Um, Interesting, interesting. So how does this macro work again? Ah, uh, okay, so <laughs> I see. So here we're using these uh, things provided by uh, Diesel, which is our query builder thingamajig. Uh, to refer to columns on these tables. Uh, I guess we could refer to, you know, this. I didn't like that. Uh, or I think I could just pass it as a string. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's supposed to be an ident. Ah, right, because we need to call these methods on it. Okay. Let's, uh, can we import that then? Does that make it happy? Okay. Now we have a warning in the macro. because we are now, we're referring to this column, stream date. Uh, but we're, we're querying the episodes table. Huh, I wonder, can we? Let's undo a step so that we remove the import. So if I save this now, this is going to error because it, it's not an identifier of a thing that exists. Could I take this I don't know if this is the right kind of type but I'm just going to try and see We see. Aha, uh -huh, we, we're moving it here. You can clone the value and consume it. Yeah, what if we did? Does that make all the types happy? Hey, Moody Abigail, thanks for the lurk. Some great emotes. <laughs> Rick and Lurk. All right. Uh, this is still not happy with this, though. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, I think we need to clone in the other place. Like it's already, it's already moved elsewhere. Uh, before we get to here. So does this. The fact we're getting this error and not an error about, um, all right, but this, mm, this doesn't work, right? Because this needs to be an identifier here. How do we do this? It's, uh, it's telling though, right, that we can pass this to the macro 
and we don't get an error. do this. <laughs> it's thinking. All right, that type checks. We don't have any warnings either. No problems. Great. All right, let's uh, let's just kick off a build. Uh, there we go. Dark and up. Close up. So yeah, this might this might fix it, and uh, yeah, I I did not know <laughs> coming into this, um, I wasn't thinking about the fact that yeah, this column is on a different table that we're. Um, this is probably not the right way to do this, regardless. Like I'm doing kind of a a lazy, I mean it it's valid SQL, or it's gonna generate valid SQL. It's it's the SQL that I've was showing here, right? But, um, you know, if I was writing SQL, this would not be the way I would write this query. <laughs> I would do something like, you know, left join, uh, left join um, streams on this condition, right? And we want to left join because uh, we always want the episode record, but there may or may not be a stream there should be a stream, but there might be a situation where we've created an episode and it, it's like a freestanding thing, not from a stream, maybe. Uh, and then here we would need to do this, but we'd also have to be explicit about where the ID is coming from because both tables have an ID. Uh, they might have titles too. So we do something like this. And we get the same result, right? It does the same thing. Um, you know, we have an actual. We have we have we're, we've written a left join rather than having a subquery that's pulling the the value. Um, we could like analyze that to see if there's any difference in the the query plan, but uh, I'm not going to bother. All right, so that should fix the um, uh, the issue though. We broke it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. What happened to API? <sighs> Syntax error. Interesting. Uh, control C. Let's go back to the other form. No, I used as here. What? Uh, what's the problem? Maybe we need to do this out. With some like, is there a as? There is not. What what do we have? The more I see different streams, there's so much tech that could be used. Oh yes, definitely. And um for me, uh, you know, using Rust here, this is this is an excuse to you know learn new things. Uh, I like Rust as a programming language. Um, if it if it was just me and I was just trying to get something done, uh, first time seeing Rust for backend stuff, really interesting. Yeah, I know there's there's stuff out there about doing um, 
like uh, Rust compiled to like WebAssembly or JavaScript for front ends. I've not really played with any of that at all. Um, prior to this project that I started uh, <laughs> late last year, uh, it had been a number of years since I'd done any Rust, but it was uh, a library that I had originally written in C++ long ago that I rewrote in Rust. Uh, again, just kind of as an excuse to, to play around with that. I think right now I need to like figure out what I'm doing. Diesel. Um, maybe I'll just figure out how to do a join. Relations might be a place to start. Uh, what if I want to alias a column? Which is the, you know, the thing I'm trying to literally do right now. I've been here before. <laughs> huh. Okay, maybe not. Declare a new alias for a table. Okay. Also, good morning, uh, Pavonis Den. How is it going? I really want to explore more, but I'm still not strong enough to get out of JavaScript. I think I might be uh, kind of two minds <laughs> on that. Um, I recall early on um, learning how to program uh, and, you know, dabbling here and there. Um, although to be fair, I think yeah, early on the, the language that finally kind of broke through for me uh, would have been C, right? That, that's where I actually started writing, you know, non-trivial programs and kind of exploring things and building up and I was there for a while before going to other languages, but I think like seeing other languages and seeing what they do and how they're different and seeing that contrast um, is a good way to, to build up skill, right? Even if the, those are languages you might not actually want to use on your projects, um, but especially just reading more code and you need to be familiar enough with the syntax to understand what the code is doing. Um, but reading more code is is a is a way to uh, just learn, um, get exposure to different ideas. And reading code itself, I think, is good practice. Just as a, a <laughs> thinking about uh, over my career, I have definitely spent more time reading code, uh, my own and others, than writing. Uh, and that that's a thing you spend a lot of time doing. So getting good at it uh, is a way to be more efficient. Okay, so that's that's what's going on here. That's not what I'm looking for. Maybe I'll uh, let's get back over here. Relations. So there's this diesel joinable thing in schema.rs. I wonder if we have something like that in our diesel setup. Um, schema.rs between the stream and the episode. Joinable episode to stream through episode 80. Okay, so that's there. That's stuff that's auto-generated by diesel. Interesting. Diesel allow tables to appear in same query. Episode streams. Okay, checks out. 
Okay, and then models. Definitely, I've just got to start uh, writing back in parts a bit. Reading the flow of other code definitely helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, it created a scheme for us, has pages joinable. Uh, mm-hmm, yep. So I think first I need to understand what their example is doing to be able to kind of follow here. So we have a book, we have a ID and title, and then we have pages that are linked to book via the book ID. And it also has an ID and then page number and content. Uh, and then there's that foreign key, book ID. Uh, and their model, queryable, identifiable, selectable, debug, partial uh, equality. And then the book has ID and title. And the page, okay, belongs to book is interesting. Do they talk about that? We need to declare an association between two records with Lisa belongs to. We need to add derive associations. Um, which allow us to add belongs to to page. So the pages belong to books and therefore reflect our one to many relations. Yeah, so I could I could probably do that. Um, and we we do follow this convention they describe here. So like in our case, it's a uh, struct episode that has a stream ID, and then we have a struct stream. Okay, and then what are what are the implications of this this setup like? How is it actually used? Like if we're looking at pages, uh, we have to, well, I wouldn't want to do this. Like I'm not going to go get the book, the, the stream. I want to do things in, um, from the context of the episode. So we can we can say all books, all. Oh, this is about grouping. I don't care about doing that. Like I, here we go. Inner join. Uh, how about left join? Uh, left join statements between different tables. Um, I mean, presumably you go the other way. Ooh, option page. As to light. Interesting. Huh. This this is doing doing it as a join is I think going to cause problems for how everything else here works. Um I mean not necessarily. Like we're already in a situation where we are getting a vector of tuples of episode and then some optional things, this type here. Instead, this would be like episode and then stream. Let me let me try this. So what if ignoring any kind of changes to the um, that we might need to models.rs, I think is the file that has like this stuff defined. Heading off to bed. Uh, 930 here in India. See you next time. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have some good sleep. So I wonder if I can just like um, I don't know if we need streams table like that. What about just streams? 
And then we could do streams. Um, stream bit. And then we can also refer to that like that. Uh, no, like that, I guess. And then we can get rid of all of this. That's going to give us a warning because it doesn't know what stream date is or stream. So we'll import those things. I think we want that. And okay, so maybe we don't need that anymore. Sure, order by doesn't like it. Let's let's see. Look here, the trait appears on table. Episodes and stream tables. It's not implemented for scheme episodes table PG sequel type not selectable. What does it mean? <laughs> that is a big error. Let's see. Okay, timestamp TZ. So let me let me remove this from the order first, just kind of to minimize changes, uh, minimize the the number of things that could be wrong here. Uh, it still doesn't like order by, which is interesting. When we're not passing, um, uh, right. So th this this type is yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. So despite the fact that I'm not referring to the column in this, the the generation of the order value here, um, it, this type is not compatible with this type of the, the thing this needs anymore. Let me just put that back. Can we? Okay, let's let's look at the full error again. Query source joins, join on, query source join. Uh, so the question is, so I suspect that, like we can't just not have this type here. Yeah, because then way down here, a function or associated uh, item name title found for struct schema streams table.
Hmm. Stream ID equals. So here's where we're doing in our, our filtering of the record. We are uh, making a subquery. We're saying where, you know, this value, or sorry, where the stream ID is in this list of values. So why is this an error? Um, probably because we changed what streams was. I think I changed the use up at the top. So is this right? Yes, no. Okay, well, that just goes. Maybe it's this one then? How do you feel about that? I see, okay, so I think we just have to say explicitly where to find the title and ID. And then otherwise, this at least, oh, there is an error. Expected struct <laughs> box operators ascending and descending. Uh, Let's uh let's let's see if Copilot can help us at all. It'd be super helpful if it could just like generate. Uh no, this is just gonna be a general. Yeah, dine as expression. Huh. Is that is that generally the like is that sufficient? When we go back to here and we define outside this. When we uh, define order here, yeah, see box ascending ID. So that's wrong, right? Because sometimes it's ascending, sometimes it's descending. So if I if I use the as expression trait, and I'm saying this is a box that contains something that has the as, as expression trait, we probably need to import it. Is that missing generics for trait? Expected one generic argument. Uh, for the type, right? So what is the type? Well, Copilot gave us this, which is wrong, probably. Um, let's let's go to the definition of this trait yeah it only has one oh it has type expression I see interesting what if we did that no that doesn't even exist so what is the type here I don't suppose you'll let me do that No, we don't know. Uh, you know, it'd be great. I mean, I know there's an error here, but I'd like to be able to like look at things. No, you're not able to actually look at what things are because there's an error. Well, 
am I supposed? Oh, it just doesn't. Right, right, right. Because this is a macro, things are 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 very uh, <laughs> not well defined. Okay, so but we can see here in the type that it finds, right? So there's this ID. And it, and it helpfully links, links me to, all right, because it's a macro and it generates some stuff. Okay, we probably are not going to need that. Use statement. Uh, so, if I look at the definition of, oh, it's a macro. <laughs> okay. Postfix operator ascending. Expression types not selectable. Maybe. Maybe this is what I want to do. I want to do like something very similar. And then we don't. Is it just diesel? doesn't like that the value of the associated type expression and as expression must be specified specify the associated type okay okay what's it unhappy about now Value this is I did that. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, this, this is what I get for relying on copilot to just like generate things. Do we think maybe it's like this? This is probably the point where I should like do some googling. <laughs> Uh, right now it's unhappy again. Maybe the error here will tell us why. The trait appears on table. This is familiar, right? Uh, yada, yada, yada is not implemented for this. Trait bound as expression, diesel expression, expression types, not selectable expression. Okay, so our type that we cobbled together here that's probably wrong uh, is doesn't satisfy this, whatever this is. definition of order by no 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 of course not one warning here one error in macro sure 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 Okay, back to the docs, I think. Uh, let's see. Rust diesel uh, order by box type. LS Bowler, please. Okay. There might be some hints in here. More tabs. Mm. 
interesting. Yeah. Uh, in So a thing that I'm not trying to solve right now that I might want to... Um, I think the... the um, Uh, React Admin UI doesn't support multiple orderings. Like you, you sort by one thing at a time, and sorting by. I think there might be a way to support like nested sorting. I could be wrong though, but that's not what I'm trying to do right now. So I don't need more than one. I'm just trying to make it so that I don't have to re-implement the same. Oh, if it's this field, then we, you know, if it's this string value, then we sort with this column. Um, for every single view. Maybe I'm going to find out that there is a uh, a better solution here. Then order by a pen. Okay, so solving the a problem I, d I don't have right now, but that's fine. It's good to know that that exists. It exists. Box query fragment. Order clause. Order into. This is not not what I'm looking for. Composing applications, which I've been there before. Maybe I'll I'll go there again. Wow, it's been about an hour. Okay, time flies. All right, so. That's the point of having a query builder is that we can, you know, compose <laughs> what we're doing, not have to repeat ourselves and, uh, or alternatively try to, you know, do string concatenation to build up queries, which, uh, <laughs> can have problems. Right. Helper types module, huh? What do we have here? Provides helper types for concisely writing the return type of functions. Okay, return type of users filter order. Hmm. Cool. 
Maybe not what I'm looking for, but we can we can try. Represents the return type of calling order. How about the the type of the thing that we are passing to order? It's just an expression, right? But it has to be an expression that's compatible with everything else. Sets the order clause of a query. If there was already, it'll be overridden. See also sending it is sending. Uh-huh. Okay. If it is useful if you need to provide an unknown ordering and need to box the return value. Uh-huh. Dine, boxable expression. I mean that looks familiar. Um what if there are multiple tables? All right, I'm gonna take a break here. Uh, that is the question now, but I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll continue figuring out how to do this. BRB.